some of the words I just can't ignore. Oh my gosh, don't get offended, it's just a joke. Then why am I not laughing when you took that poke? Compare me to a character? Now see, that's kind of funny. But why would anybody want to be viewed as a monkey? I didn't want to be a part of this community with targets on their backs so I wouldn't have to face the fact that I can never stop being black. Wow, welcome back. Those were the powerful words of 17-year-old Tiana Chambers sharing her experiences as a young black woman and reacting to the protests that unfolded last summer. Tiana, so talented, was among a group of teens I sat down with not too long ago for a raw and real conversation on race and racism, a conversation we're sharing with you today. By a show of hands, how many of you have been told by your parents that you have to conduct yourself in a certain manner when you're in public because you're a person of color? Has anyone gotten that lecture from their parents? Okay, all right, only the black people. <laughs> Imagine that we're looking at this microcosm here. Um, so I got, don't walk into a school store with your hands in your pockets. Always be well-behaved and well-dressed. My parents have always taught me to, you know, make sure that you look presentable, make sure that you look classy, as my mom would say, and that if I don't, people might not take my opinion seriously. I have to be aware of what I have in my bag. Uh, like Jim, I do carry ID wherever I go. If I am wearing a hoodie with my parents, I try to wear bright colors. I try to avoid the dark colors just so that I'm recognizable. I can definitely talk about the hands in your pockets one. I know my parents definitely instilled that in my brothers and I growing up. And there was actually a convenience store right by my house. And um, a lot of like the kids in our neighborhood have troubles with like the owners or the workers there because they'll send somebody to follow the black kids around the store when they go in to get slushies, but then there will be other kids literally stealing from them and they won't even see because they're too busy watching to see if we're going to do anything. You mentioned how students in your elementary school would react when you would return from vacation with a tan. Can you tell us more about that? Every time like I came back from like a tropical country, I would come back with like a nice rich tan and then they would just like judge me and be like, oh, like, why are you so black? I've been told my hair looks like string, it's wool. I've had people randomly touch my hair, which I'm sure as a black woman, Tracy, you can relate to how irritating that can be at some time. Um, I've had people always touch it, just randomly put their hands through it. I'll feel it, I'll turn around and be like, why is your hands in my hair? I've had a lot of um, ignorant people asking me like where I'm from, and for some reason, I was born in Canada is not a satisfactory answer. You talked about a bunch of black students including yourself waiting outside for a white student to come back out from uh, a chat with the teacher. And the teacher came outside with this student and saw her heading towards these black students and said to her, well, you tell me, what did she say to your white friend? She said um, not to get into trouble. She doesn't want to see her getting into any kind of trouble, basically telling her like not to associate with the wrong crowd. So it was kind of confusing to me because I, I know my friends and I were all honor roll students. So it was like, she like just placed this label on us without even knowing anything about us. I'd love to know how many other students in this chat by a show of hands, anyone else been called white because maybe they're thriving in school, get good grades, okay. Um, back to you, Cameron, what do you make of that? What do you make of this assumption that you cannot be black and thriving in school? I think it's a horrible stereotype and it's very offensive to me uh, particularly because it's just degrading all of my accomplishments and my achievements. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's simple as that, right? Uh, like you said, just because uh, I'm black doesn't mean I can't achieve these things, doesn't mean that I'm inferior, doesn't mean that I'm not intelligent. Uh, I can do all these things, I can do even more. for yourself and helping to move the BLM conversation forward even while not being Black? Or what do you see as your role in that? I definitely do. For the most part of the time when it was June, everyone was posting all of these, these Black squares. And that was the thing, right? And I didn't want to make it feel like it was just a trend on social media because that's not what this movement was. 
It was a movement to talk about social justice. It was a movement to talk about human rights and how humans should be treated as one. Growing up in like a Chinese family, there's a lot of like racism that goes on um, in the Chinese family. And so I was like kind of afraid to kind of like get really involved with this at first. The things I saw were, it's just really hurt me, even though like I'm not black, seeing those things happen to just people, like humans, just really shocked me. Um, so I felt like I had to get involved. In the summertime, I organized the Black Lives Matter March in Markham, and that brought out at least like 800 people, if not more. You came out here because you believe in a movement. Apply this energy everywhere you go. Because enough is enough. We are tired. We are tired of what's been going on. We are tired of seeing our brothers dead on the streets. I really, truly tried to make the protest surrounded by not anger or not sadness, but how we can uplift each other, how we can move forward, and how we can actually do change. I want to know what makes you hopeful. I think that as people grow more aware, they're going to push more on the government to make decisions that will benefit um, all minorities and that will help end systematic racism. It's good to know that, you know, we have allies and more people are doing their research on what's going on and what's happening and like the history behind everything. So I am hopeful. When I saw the marches that took place in the summer, I saw that they didn't only take place in like North America, it happened in Europe, um, South America, like my countries like Colombia, Ecuador, I was like, wow, like you're fighting for like, because you know how there's like Afro-Latinas. So I'm like, wow, you're fighting for black people. Like, I feel like this generation is like not going to tolerate this. Like we're going to fight back. So I have hope. We have, you know, all this power on our hands, even though we might be young, even though, you know, we, some people might say we're just teenagers. We still know what we're talking about and we still have a voice. And the youth voice is what's really going to bring a change and people are already picking up on that and trying to jumpstart, you know, giving the youth a really a place to make changes. So I'm very hopeful for the future.